So right now I'm headed to a ballistic military base in the middle of Alaska with two beautiful Tesla Model Ys behind me. This is one of the coldest places in the United States and is where Tesla does most of their cold weather testing. This morning it was negative 20 degrees. We're gonna be dissecting the engineering behind these Model Ys and see what makes them handle so well in extreme temperatures. We'll see what lasts longer in the cold, me or the cars. This video is not sponsored. I am one of the first people outside of Tesla to sit in the driver's seat, but in order to do that, I had to come out here to the middle of nowhere and it has been very worth it. Let's get started. So it's hard to visually comprehend how cold it is. And I've never done this before, but this is a cup of boiling water. Let's see what happens. Back up a little bit. <laughs> oh my gosh. And it just instantly turns into a giant cloud of steam. That's how cold it is right now. So Tesla's made this hill with an inch thick pad of ice in the center, which allows two different surfaces for the car to travel uphill on. Two tires will be on the snowy cement and two tires will be on the ice patch. So I'm able to walk on the cement just fine, but this icy patch, oh man. Oh yeah, it's pretty slick. <laughs> Most cars probably wouldn't be able to handle this. Let's see what happens with the Model Y. Coming up the hill, full stop on the ice. Now pay close attention to these two side tires. They're gonna start to slip initially, but then the car is smart enough to know to transfer the torque from the slipping tires into the other tires while simultaneously applying the brakes to the tires that are slipping. And it allows a much better control over the torque. You could call it traction control. So right now we're doing an off-road course. There is no asphalt underneath this snow. This is just pure packed snow driving with an electric vehicle. So far we're doing pretty good. Going 20 miles an hour. We can feel that traction control kick in. I'm gonna go up around this loop. I feel like I'm very in control of the vehicle right now. Like it does do what I want it to. One thing that's noticeable between driving this and driving my truck is that I feel like there's a little bit more responsiveness. Like as soon as I tell it to make the turn, it does it. Where with my truck, when I'm driving, I have to like preemptively turn because I know it's gonna take a second for the, the rest of the truck to register what I want it to do. But with this one, it's pretty instantaneous. I think my biggest takeaway from this is that the instant torque, while most people think that it's great for speed, it's even better when it comes to like tricky situations where you need the vehicle to like correct and be safe. And in snow, that instant torque is very usefully utilized. So behind me I have a Model Y and a Model 3. The biggest difference between the two of course is the size. The range is roughly equal between the two, both over 300 miles. These are the engineering cars we've been driving around for the last couple days. And I think it's uh, time to take a closer look at the inside and what makes them both different. I can't feel anything. Before we get into the big stuff, one of the subtle improvements that I really like about the Model Y, you know, they improve each version as they as they make them, is the door handles. The door handle is still the same, you know, use your thumb and prop it up, but if there's ever a lot of ice that's covering the door, sometimes the door handles can get frozen, and this time around, you can press the door handle and uh, break the ice on both sides, so it makes it easier to get inside. Plus, the charging port is now heated on the Model Y, and ice won't form around the charging port. So inside the Model Y, some of the biggest questions I have is about the cargo space inside. So this particular vehicle has the five seats, but they do have an option for an additional seven seats in the back here in the cargo space. The back latch is powered, comes up by itself and can be shut from the inside. And then this seat can fold down as well. And when both seats are laid down, you can almost sleep back here fairly comfortably, so I'm about six feet tall and I can definitely sleep in the back of my car. 
with the back hatch open, there is 66 cubic feet of storage inside. And if we go around here to the front, that's where it looks most like the Model 3. It has the same 15 inch display and kind of the same interior as the Model 3. There's just more room, more space. Basically it has the same handling as the Model 3, like the quickness and the agility, but it has more qualities of an SUV. Higher ride height, more head clearance, and just more space for activities inside the vehicle. The Model Y is also currently the only Tesla with this special off-road mode, but with Tesla always doing over-the-air updates, who knows if that feature will be passed on to other vehicles. I assume the Cybertruck will also have off-road mode, but we'll have to wait for that review to find out. Now, as far as ride height goes, we are gonna figure out exactly the difference between the two. So measuring the ground clearance of the Model Y, looks like we have roughly seven inches, and the Model 3 is roughly five and a half. So there's an inch and a half more ground clearance on the Model Y. And the ground clearance is important if you're going off-road or driving in snow. Coming around to the back of the Model Y, this rectangle plate right here pops out for a tow hitch. And along with all those physical features, it has the standard you know, sensors all around the outside, the autopilot, and everything else that Tesla is known for. The special concoction of energy inside of a Tesla is made up of batteries. The whole thing is electric, and as we know, batteries don't work very well in cold temperatures. Teslas have a special ability to heat and cool the big battery underneath their cars to keep it at that happy temperature. We've effectively been driving around in temperatures colder than a household freezer for two days, and as you can see, the cars are doing just fine. Testing on extreme surfaces, they really mean like solid blocks of ice. So one of the most important things to have when driving in extreme weather conditions like this is good tires. The second most important thing is traction control. Now the benefit that electric vehicles like this Model Y have over gas powered vehicles is that the torque is instant. Gas powered vehicles only have one motor while this electric Model Y has two. And let me explain why that's a benefit. So I'm with the Tesla engineers right now, and this is one of their development vehicles, which allows us to turn off the motors individually. So for educational purposes, we're gonna see what happens in a rear wheel drive car and a front wheel drive car. The normal Model Ys have the traction control enabled all the time, um, but we turned off the front motor, turned off traction control, and this is what happens in a rear wheel drive. When I accelerate, the rear of the car just spins out automatically, and we do a full like donut which is really fun if you're trying to spin donuts intentionally, but not when you're trying to be a safe driver. So now we have the rear motor turned off and just the front motor engaged, and we can see what it's like driving a front wheel drive car with no traction control. And so when I slam on the gas or the acceleration, I have no turning capabilities. The car's just moving in a straight line, which also isn't super safe if you're on public roads. So we can see that the car reacts differently depending on which motor is engaged, but when we have both motors going at the same time, the computer in the car is smart enough to carefully distribute the power between the front and the rear to keep the car stable and going the direction you want it to the entire time. And on top of that, the car is able to brake each of the wheels individually, slow it down and stop it from spinning so you have even more control. It's a unique combination of hardware and software that so far we've only seen in Teslas. If you're driving a gas-powered vehicle and you go pedal to the floor, it takes a minute for it to start accelerating. But with a Tesla or an electric vehicle, that acceleration is instantaneous. And that same heart-stopping acceleration feature that people think is so fun is the same feature that's keeping everyone safe in these extreme weather conditions. So this might all look like fun and games, but there's actually a ton of testing and data points and engineering going on behind the scenes, information that they're gathering from the car while these tests are being performed. Basically, we're trying to inflict a lifetime's worth of stress on these engineering vehicles so we know how much they can handle and how well they can survive. One cool thing about Tesla is they have over a million vehicles on the road right now, and each one of those vehicles is providing different data points all the time that Tesla can analyze and use to create a better fleet of cars in the future, or improve the cars they have now. Over-the-air updates aren't just cute things like romance mode or video games on the center screen. 
They can include range increases, performance increases, software fixes. Almost every part of the car can be controlled via software and can be adjusted over the air. Obviously not every Tesla owner is going to be pushing their car and doing donuts on ice circles like we are, but it's good to know that Tesla has engineered for success in these extreme environments. So no matter how you look at it, there's a limited supply of recycled dinosaurs out there, but an unlimited supply of solar, wind, and, you know, renewable electricity. And as we can see, the Model Y handles just fine in cold weather. I'd say it passed the durability test. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, and uh, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And thanks a ton for watching. We'll see you around.